Hey guys, this is Chris, Tabletop Sports Delaware. Thought I would uh, do a little video, kind of catch up, test out how the uh, new setup is going. It's amazing the difference that 16 gigs of RAM can do to make it so this stuff isn't blurry and actually happens when I want it to. <laughs> <coughs> so yeah, I got the computer set up today. Uh, table is good. And uh, yesterday, the gaming group, we went up to Newark, and there's a couple of game stores up there. I was like, you know what? I want some new board games. So we all made a day of it. We finished um, our friend's tabletop RPG game, and this was to kind of celebrate it. So last week, we played D&D. &D. This week, we went uh, game store hopping. And we went to the first one, and it was mostly books. It was supposed to be secondhand stuff. It wasn't much. It was supposed to be uh, uh, board games. It, it was what it was. I had a good time yesterday. It, board games at this place was pretty much an afterthought. There were some to look at, but nothing that was really on my radar. So we stayed and we hung out for a while. And um, Ethan bought some things. Uh, Jesse came with us. Uh, Ron was with us. Um, didn't really see anything at the first place. So then we went over to Days of Night. And as we're getting closer to days and nights, I'm starting to recognize this part of Newark. I, I don't go up there. It's over an hour north. I, I don't go up there. Nothing wrong with the place. I just don't go there. And we're getting closer, and I'm like, this looks familiar. And we're driving down the street, and I'm like, I know this street. And it's Main Street. And we get close, and everyone's like, oh, see, there's the... Days of Night sign right down there on the uh, left ahead of us, and we're in a left lane, and we're coming up. And when we get through the intersection, and we can see it clearly, and the van that's in front of us gets a little further ahead, just past it is a yellow sign that says, Cameras, etc. I'm like, holy crap, I knew we were here. He says, yeah, parking is right behind that building. I know exactly where we are because this is my camera shop. Now, for those of you... Most of you probably don't know this. A couple of you might have picked it up over the years. I am a black and white film photographer. I've got stuff in the closet over here for um, processing film and uh, enlarging negatives onto printing paper and uh, chemical processing of the paper as well. And we get there and, you know, in days of nights, as it turned out, when I finally made it to days and nights, uh, days of Nights, it, they have a lot of board games. A lot of board games. And I am going to have to go back up there for the purpose of going there to see what board games they have so I can buy one or two. However, as we're getting out of the car and I'm like, oh, I'm going to the camera store, I'm going there first, I haven't been up here in a long time, I'm going to the camera store, I'll see you guys later. And, it, you know, you walk up around the corner and it's camera store, it's Chinese restaurant, camera store, Days of Nights. So, in I went. Now, Cameras, etc., is right on the corner. So around, front on Main Street, in the front door. Walking around. Now this is one of those camera stores where they sell a lot of digital products. There's a lot of analog product in the store. They have um, a small section of shelves where they have darkroom chemistry on the floor. On the showroom floor. In the showroom. Still. Um, printing papers. They had... Uh, Harmon, Ilford uh, kinds of papers. They had some Kodak chemistry and I'm looking at it and I'm like, you know, I still have some rolls of film at home, but they didn't have all of one kind of chemistry. So I was like, nah, I can't get into this. So we're talking and one of the guys actually recognized me from years ago and uh, we're sitting there talking, uh, me and Jim and, and the other one's like, oh yeah, well look at our uh, mysterious vault of old cameras. And I was like, oh, I haven't walked over here in a long time. And I go walking along and I get myself into trouble. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> no, I did not get board games. I got a camera. Yes, I, yes, it's, yeah, yeah, a camera. Yeah, I haven't gotten a camera in a long time. Uh, I saw this one, and inside my mind was a huge oh hell <laughs> so they're waiting on someone else there's a little pause and i'm like okay how much is the speed graphic 
So he comes over and he gets it out and he's showing me and it's got all the film holders and everything with it and going through it and I'm like, this is because they sell stuff on consignment. I said, this is a consignment piece, isn't it? He said, yeah. I said, how much are you asking for? He said, 200. I said, will he go 175? He said, let me go find out. And as he's going to find out immediately, I'm like, I shouldn't have asked for that because seeing all the stuff that's in this box, I and I said, if he comes back and says it's a firm 200, which he did, and I immediately said, sold. I need some film. <laughs> oh, man. But, yes, I have. I've, I've got some 35mm cameras. I've got a Nikon F1. That's right. Old Nikon. I've got uh, Minolta's, which I cut my teeth on. Um, XGM, which is my first SLR camera. Single lens reflex, a type of lens. And um, also uh, Minolta X700, the last um, non-automated analog camera they did before they started coming out with the um, like the EOS bodies for Canon as an equivocation, because I'm not sure what Minolta had after the X700. Um, they had the EOS 620, EOS 630, the EOS series of cameras. But I saw this. I had allotted an inordinate amount of money for board games in case I really decided to go crazy. But when I saw this, I was like, nah, can't do it. I need the camera. So I got the camera. Yes, I did. That is a speed graphic. It is a two and a quarter by three and a quarter format. And a really cool thing about this is it comes with these holders for uh, 120 roll film. So you can load it in here and you can take these pictures instead of like with your older view cameras, which I had one for a while. I don't have it anymore. Sold it years ago. Uh, where you load the film into the film holder like so up there in a dark room and then close it and then put this back in and turn that and then you focus your image on the ground glass right there let me see if i can't get you a wee little demonstration of that real quick give me just a second um hold on if i do that Is it? Yes. Okay. So you can see through to the ground. Now we've got to adjust the aperture is there. That's fine. Um, we want to get this sucker close as we can. So hopefully you'll be able to see through. And there you go. And then you see the image on the ground glass inside the hood you focus on it by moving the uh, lens in and out the standard moves so that way you get the proper focus and everything and then close the hood up and you take your film holder and where the ground glass was that you focus the image on when you put your film holder in like that and then you turn this and you take the blind out. Now the film that you loaded into the film holder is exactly where the ground glass was. So that way your focused image is going to be where the film is. So, and a little quick run down on cameras. But yes, that's, that's what I did. It came with all of these film holders roll backs the original gray flock back uh, that came with it bought a five pack of uh, tmx uh, kodak uh, tmax 100 iso film so yeah i spent uh 236 dollars on this for a 400 dollar five or six hundred dollar collectible camera but it's functioning and the guy was just selling it on consignment whoever it was and i was like man Wow. Just one visit to the camera store and it... I don't have chemistry to do film or paper at the moment. I've got all the stuff to do it. I just don't have any chemistry. So I get tax money back. I'll 
I'll probably get some chemistry at least to do film. And then I'm going to kind of get back into photography again. Um, I was big into photography. A, there's a photographic forum that is still up and running and still has a lot of members, and I'm still a member of. Um, APUG, Analog Photography Users Group. Uh, www.apug.org. And it's run by Sean Ross, photographer in New Zealand. And actually, it is now run by a company called Photocentric, which Sean Ross is either owner of or a member of. I don't forget. I don't remember. It's been a while. Um, but I learned a lot about photography from Mom. She got me started in photography. And it... Um, one weekend, I went down to the Outer Banks with my dad. And we uh, went to uh, the uh, lighthouse at Oregon Inlet. Body Island Lighthouse, and there were overcast clouds, and we had to, I'd taken some photographs of the lighthouse, and we hop in the Jeep, and we're starting to back out just as the sun comes out, and I hop out real quick with the Jeep almost running over my foot. It stalled. I get my camera up, and I rip off a couple of shots. And then I uh, come back and we go up to uh, Dover Mall to take the film. Uh, at that time, it was Cutler Camera, now defunct. And when I get the prints back, I'm looking and I'm like, holy crap. Out of all these pictures that I took, there's a photograph in here. And it made me realize what I was capable of doing with this equipment. And I really launched myself into it. Um, actually edited a small time... Um, what well, took over as editor, a um, film photon online film photography magazine, a monthly magazine. And I only ran it for about a year or so because faith was getting worse at that time and it was just too much and I wasn't going to be able to do its service. And it was really hard getting contributors, other photographers, so I went ahead and I let it go. But it was called Creative Image Maker Magazine. And there's uh, a lot of really good stuff in those magazines. I'm very proud of what myself and my fellow photographers did to put that together. It really had potential, but nobody took it over. And it just went by the wayside. And I'm sure other publications have come up. I used to love uh, black and white photography, outdoor photography. Um, I've still got a lot of photographic books over here. Ansel Adams and Galen Roll are my two favorite photographers of all time. Both are past. Um, but one for black and white and one for color. I really love black and white photography because, and it's, it's a way of learning how to see. If you are drawn to something by color, by hues, by the vividness of hues, that image needs to be made with color film or a color medium. If you are drawn by lines or shapes or um, brightness to darkness uh, contrast, that might be better suited for black and white if you know how to see. Um, and that means know how to look at a subject and have a very good idea of what that's going to look like in a black and white print. Um, so I really, I was drawn to black and white at a certain point and it started going eh, let's do 10% black and white because it's cool and then it was like 30% black and white and then I started getting in Ansel Adams and got his uh, basic photo series um, the camera the the negative and the print and then it just started going black and white all of it I haven't shot color film and I don't know how many years um, but then when Faith died um, I got out of photography. I, I stopped doing it. I stopped breaking everything out. Like I said, I had a large, larger than this 4x5 view camera and a huge honking Bessler and larger that just about took up this entire table that I'm on. Um, I sold that stuff to someone who was going to use it. And for some reason, over the last two or three years, I was like, eh, sell the black, sell your darker and stuff. You're never going to use it. But for some reason, I kept it. And then this weekend I go and, yeah, kind of back into photography. So I thought I would, A, make sure how everything here is running as far as the new video setup. Um, 
if you any of you guys watched my castles of burgundy it was hanky as all get out it was horrible um i'm really thinking about bringing them down and doing it all over again because now we've got this set up um it was to the point where i couldn't run the two cameras at the same time because on the old computer i only had six gigs of ram and it could not handle it so i wanted to also test this out just to make sure that it was going to work to my exacting standards and i'm going to say oh look someone's coming to visit us guys hey marvin and marvin he he's my uh, photographic cat caddy he carries my camera bags for me don't do it. he dropped it in the brook again i'm docking your pay dude <laughs> So, yeah, that's all I got for you on the Sunday evening. Um, we're going to be getting some games. Not going to be going hard and heavy, but uh, now that I've got something that I'm confident the content's going to be good, um, videos will be coming up. Sporadically, perhaps, but there will be content, so everything's okay. Um, yeah, so there you go. A little uh, 411 on me, a little 411 on what's going on, and... Hmm. E meat tooth and I would say that this is a success I like it I'm good with it so yeah we're gonna we're gonna go with this yeah I'm digging it hope you guys are digging it this is Chris tabletop sports Delaware the artist formerly known as stratomatic Delaware the artist formerly known as and now known again as El black and white photographer extraordinaire <laughs> The artist formerly known as Creative Image Maker Magazine Editor. The artist formerly known as Captain Federated. The artist formerly known as... There's a lot. It's... There's a lot. Keep on rolling. <laughs>